Hi everyone, hope you're all doing good. It's a lovely day here in Castlebone to begin our Geology of Ore Deposits episode. The overall content of the Geology of Ore Deposits subunit of Unit 1 of the Economic Geology course consists of learning some fundamental definitions, understanding the idea behind various classification schemes, learning about textures, paragenesis and zoning, and finally understanding the genesis of various ore deposits such as magmatic, hydrothermal related to magmatism and orogeny, hydrothermal related to sedimentary environment, sedimentary and supergene deposits. We will begin with few fundamental definitions that are uh, essential in learning the geology of ore deposits. Well, not all of them described here are strictly definitions, rather they are the descriptions of the terminologies. First off, uh, we have mineral, which is traditionally defined as a naturally occurring inorganic crystalline material with a unique chemical composition and a definite atomic structure. However, in mineral, mineral industry, a mineral refers to any naturally or artificially occurring material from which mineral or aggregate of value can be extracted profitably. It is considered natural if it is available in the earth and artificial if it is synthesized in the laboratory like for example graphite. The synthetic graphite makes up for significant proportion of graphite consumed annually by the United States. Next we have uh, mineral occurrence which means any locality where a useful mineral or material is found. Whereas mineral prospect means any occurrence that has been developed by underground or subsurface drilling to determine the extent of mineralization. It must be noted that the terms mineral occurrences or mineral prospect does not have any resource or economic implications. We then have uh, mineralization defined as a geological event when one or more economic minerals are formed in another unit. For instance, occurrence of galena and sphalerite in carbonate, which accounts for lead and zinc mineralization. Similarly, occurrence of bestnesite in carbonatite accounts for rare earth element mineralization. In simple words, we can all we can call mineralization as an earth process which makes an attempt to accumulate one or more metals at any given place. It is equally important to understand what is not a mineralization. A mere presence of element of interest in a certain concentrations within a mineral does not account for mineralization. For instance, presence of hundreds to thousands ppm of Nickel hosted by olivine in perotite is not mineralization. Similarly, rare earth elements present in zircon or spheme is not RE mineralization or rare earth element mineralization. Metallogeny implies mineralization in a global scale to such an extent that it has contributed to crustal growth. For example, we have mid arkin to early Proterozoic iron metallogeny in the form of banded iron formations. Similarly, late arkin gold metallogeny in the form of orogenic gold deposits in the greenstone banks. <clears throat> now, when does a mineralization qualify as mineral deposit? Assume that you are looking for a particular mineral in a locality for your industry and you find a sufficient quantity of that mineral accumulated in that particular place which is perhaps the result of a mineralization event you have a mineral deposit so a mineral deposit is any occurrence of a valuable commodity or mineral that is of sufficient size and grade that has potential for economic development under past present or future favorable conditions but remember, all mineral deposits are not ore bodies. To qualify as an ore body or deposit, 
the mineral deposits should carry an economic value in the present scenario so an ore deposit is a well defined mineral deposit that has been tested and found to be of sufficient size grade and accessibility to be extracted and processed at a profit at a specific time thus the size and grade of an ore deposit changes as the economic conditions change to summarize we can say all mineral deposits are not ore bodies but all ore bodies are reserves you must be familiar by now from your earlier classes what is a reserve if not please check out my previous episodes on mineral resource crisis all mineral deposits may or may not contain reserves and are hence unminable and uneconomical now that you know what a mineral or ore deposit is you must also know that these deposit are always associated with the unwanted components in most cases these unwanted parts are the rock forming minerals such as calcite quartz iron pyrite etc are termed as gang minerals <laughs> the grade refers to the proportion of the ore that is the ore mineral or actual elemental metal content that can be extracted from it and is expressed as a percentage for instance when we say the grade of the cornish tin ore is between 0.5 to 1.5 percent casterite that is the tin oxide we mean that there is between 98.5 to 99.5 percent gang and the remainder is the ore mineral that is your casterite uh, on the other hand tenor refers to the percentage of the ore mineral that is actual metal to be extracted for instance the tenor of iron ore vary considerably say if you take the example of limonite which has 35% fe hematite has 57% fe and magnetites tenor is 70% f now <clears throat> we have a wee bit of simple mathematical exercise in order to calculate the ore grade let's calculate ore grade of copper in chalcopyrite the chemical formula of chalcopyrite is cu fe s2 the relative atomic masses are copper is 63.5 iron 56 and sulfur 32 therefore 1 kg of copper contains I mean 1 kg of copper is present in 2.9 kg of chalcopyrite if ore contains 2% copper then it will have 5.8% chalcopyrite and lastly we have tonnage which refers to the total amount of metal that can be extracted from any particular ore deposit it involves a simple calculation that considers the volume of the ore deposit the grade of the ore and the tenor of the ore mineral now we shall move on to the characteristics of the ore deposits every ore deposit in the world is unique in its own way they have a characteristic form for example it can be bedded deposits vein type deposits etc every naturally occurring ore deposit is associated with a host rock some host rocks are specific for an ore deposit and some are non specific for others for instance the magmatic ore deposits are associated with igneous rocks like we have primary rare earth element deposits which are known to occur generally in carbonatites and alkaline igneous rocks 
whereas most of the hydrothermal deposits are not specific to any particular host rock like we have hydrothermal copper deposits which occurs in wide range of rock types the deposits have typical mineral assemblage and texture and they can be classified as small medium large giant and super giant deposits finally we have the classification of the ore deposits different classification schemes of ore deposits are proposed based on different features as the primary attribute for categorization but remember none is perfect i have made an attempt here to summarize different types of ore deposits based on geological characteristics the first is based on the type location example includes sudbury type nickel deposit carlin type gold deposit lake superior type banded iron formation deposit these deposits are typical to that particular location and hence has been named after the type locations next we have host rock sandstone type uranium deposit quartz pebble conglomerate type gold uranium deposit dreisen tin tungsten scar and gondite type manganese deposits we have texture of host rocks as a classification scheme used as a classification scheme for example you have porphyry type copper molybdenum gold deposits and next you have structure of host rock or ore body constituent or rock of a sedimentary sequence in which ore body occurs tectonic setting is also used as a scheme for classification of ore deposits element association in ore deposit and lastly we have the process of ore formation that's it for this class guys i'll catch up with you in the next episode on the textures of ore minerals have a nice day